Okay. Just making sure. And we shall be live. All right. Hello, everyone that's watching this. Uh, this is David, and here <laughs> I got my friend Lewis with me. Uh, today, we're going to be talking about kind of just uh, how to fix your life, right? It, it sounds very vague. Um, I want to kind of just put the disclaimer right at the start just so that we don't get accused of being PUA life coach BS nonsense. We're not your spiritual fathers. We're not PUA life coaches. Um, we're not going to give you easy to solve tips to like make you a Sigma billionaire, right? We're not going to do any of that. But what I, what I plan to do in this stream at the very least is kind of just talk about the main problems that people have in society and the main problem I have with people when they respond to that. And I think this is a genuine issue that people people are really causing trouble for themselves when they just kind of give up and get into depression. Uh, so I plan to just kind of give you like me and Lewis, we plan to give you kind of basic principles to follow to kind of start your path to normalization, right? Be normal, but don't be a normie. But then again, most people who say be normal are like incredibly abnormal people, but that's a different topic. So um, before I get into this, I'm gonna kind of do a sound check. If you guys, I suppose, I suppose you can hear me. Uh, Lewis, just give me mm, a give check, you, yeah. check, mic check. Mic check, one, two. Lewis, who the heck are you? Let's just kind of get that out of the way before we like get into this stream. And do the bike check, of course. Uh, yeah, well, um, I'm not JY Lewis from Twitter. I am actually the Thank God. original. <laughs> I am the original Arce Lewis. Um, yes. JY Lewis merely uh, proceeds from me. So ah. people tend to think that I'm him, but I'm not. We're totally unrelated. Um, you may be yeah, less of your head now. Sorry, dude. All right, <laughs> go ahead. <laughs> I'm just uh, an Orthodox Christian who is interested in philosophical theology. I run a channel with Kai called Orthodox Shahada, and I also assist Ubi Petrus with his videos. Mm -hmm. um, I have a full-time job as a scientist, and I am pretty content with my life, so I guess that is... <laughs> sufficient amount of information yeah. so i mean what again i kind of want to put this as a disclaimer if we're not gonna kind of like try to boost views or like try to like give a false impression to people by acting as if our lives are perfect or that you know you should follow our examples rather i think at least for me personally i can speak from my own experience as someone who was a loser for a very long time of my life like very long time period i mean maybe i still am just a lesser degree that I've kind of observed some common mistakes that people do in life where they kind of just completely shut down their own potential and just give up and just like lay down and rot, right? Which, uh, you know, which is actually a popular term in some circles, right? Uh, late LDAR, that's basically how like the acronym of it. Um, but what I want to start with is I don't want to kind of just flame people who are like having a rough time, right? Because I think that's a bit unfair. Um, I do think, you know, as much as like we like to kind of just uh, give off the impression that our lives are all cool and normal, which is kind of what just social media is all about. A lot of people have problems. They have problems at their home. They have problems with their family. They have problems with their job, with their school. I mean... This is for people who spend most of their time online. Why are you spending most of your time online? You're, most, you're spending most of your time online, not with real people, but with other people you've never met who doesn't care about you and all you're doing is posting memes. That is a waste of time. I'm sorry to say you, tell you. I've done that myself for a very long time. It's a time waster. You don't learn anything. You barely learn anything and you just end up being just a normie, just a very fringe, failed normie, so to speak. But I want to kind of be fair because I also agree with the certain assessments of what's happening with reality and what's wrong with it. And, and I kind of want to give my take on it, Lewis, if you want to add things. Maybe I forgot something you can add as well. But I will agree that, for example, the school system is very inept and unoptimized. Uh, family, you know, mothers and fathers, they don't know how to be mothers and fathers, a lot of them. And I think that's, that has to do with kind of like the new 
world order that we're in, not in like conspiracy sense, but kind of just like technology, right? Uh, we're not, you know, a lot of people are still not used to how to handle technology while also being a normal person. Usually there's an extreme of both sides. And so some people kind of just think that the correct solution is to like, oh, let's break all computers and go live in the woods. That's not, but that's not going to solve the problem because man is damaged in a lot of ways. And the computer, you know, you can cut off one source of that symptom, but the entire sickness is not going to go away. You're just going to cut off one symptom. Um, you know, gender dynamics are horribly mismatched. Part of it is due to technology. Part of it is due to certain social movements. Part of it is due to laws, right? Um, the, you know, productivity has increased, but average wage, right? It's remained stagnant, right? There's a myriad of different reasons why that's the case. I mean, life really has took a downturn for most people. And I'm not denying any of that. Uh, I'm not denying that there are social difficulties. People are deracinated. That's a popular term, right? Uh, people have become very individualized. They don't live within a community. They live just individually and just try to do their own things. They get kicked from their homes when they're 18. They go to university and try to survive in alliance then. I mean, when you think about it in a different way, in a lot of these ways, yes, these are first world problems. We're not, we don't have the problem of trying to find a roof under our head. You know, we don't have normal, you know, the, the kind of issues that people historically have had. But the kind of issues that we have today are very spiritual because of rampant atheism also going on as well. But it's very psychological as well. So it's a very different type of problem that we're all facing with. And we're not used to it. We don't really know where we can turn to, right? Even the people who we think as guides, ultimately, there's just something wanting there. And... Uh, all of these things are right. But the ultimate question I will bring up is what are you going to do about it, right? You have a multitude of solutions and the most popular one is a depression solution. Just lay down and rot. Just lay down. Don't do anything. Complain about life. Make your own little time-wasting click. Waste your time and effort and energy and decrease your value chasing after valueless people who don't care about you. And just compound the depression over and over and over and over again. That's the most popular solution a lot of people have. And a lot of people don't want a solution. Part of it is because the way it works is that they kind of just don't want to be wrong. Uh, but another, another reason is because it's, they think that they can't do it. Right? A lot of people genuinely feel like they can't do it. They failed in a lot of ways. I mean, I remember I was playing a video game uh, with a friend of mine. And uh, he wasn't doing good in the video game. He suddenly started to talk about how he's a failure in life. And this kind of stuff. We were like, bro, what the heck's going on? You know, like, calm down. You're not a failure because you failed to get a headshot. Right? But a lot of people have these, you know, inner feelings. And what I want to do in this video is give you tips and guidelines to not be in this pile of mud. To get out of it, I'm not going to solve your life problems. You're the ones who's going to solve them. What I'm going to try to do is I'm going to try to say, hey, you know, you can look into these problems that you have. Try working on it. You know, now is not a bad time, right? The best time is right now. That's kind of the common theme that I want to have for this video. And Lewis, if you have anything else to add, uh, you know, feel free to do so. Yeah, uh, just to reiterate, yeah, like um, neither me nor David are spiritual fathers or health experts. Um, a lot of the stuff that I'm going to mention are just things that have helped me personally. And I tend to fail to follow a lot of these things. Um, but just like being Christian, you know, when you sin, you just get back up and try again. So I'm not necessarily following all of these 100%. But if you do, or if I did, I would be a lot better off. Um, and I have done them before, but sometimes you lapse and that's the way it is. Um, some things I've learned recently and others I've believed in a long time, I think one of the reasons why depression might be something that people slip into is um, partially because of, I think, the male kind of coming to age moment when you kind of go through puberty. And there isn't really so much of an abrasion moment because I, th I suppose back in the past, there would be kind of some, some rite of passage where you would undergo a process that would somehow deeply shock you or bring you to a realization about what your place is in the, in the world or in the community. And that's just been completely excised now. Everyone just kind of undergoes the same generic process. Um, 
but then at the same time as a young male you you get you do get vilified um because unfortunately it's just the case that men don't have some kind of intrinsic worth um and this is obviously a take that is said online often now is yeah. that you kind of have to build up your own worth um and it's harder to do that nowadays because of just the complete removal of any of these kind of coming to age rights or places for men or young men in society now like nowadays you just become a keyboard monkey and uh, you know work the nine to five so um yeah i i think that's just uh why eventually everything just becomes so monotone um you feel you don't have a, a place a purpose um you get too used to comfort and so you spend more and more time in the comfort in the comfort zone and it's comfy and you're happy there and then the problem is is that this doesn't actually develop you or cause you any significant challenge and so you just sort of sit in there and you stagnate and then you end mm -hmm. up in a depressed position mm -hmm. uh, so yeah that's that would just be kind of like a preface i'd say to add on to what you were saying yeah pretty much and what kind of like what we can kind of get into is kind of like with with the principles and kind of how to get out of that rut or like some principles of course people are kind of giving their own like interpret like i see for example how to fix your life stop playing video games okay i stopped playing video games what now right like what what do you think i'm gonna do now are you telling me i should not do something i enjoy right so i think a lot of people kind of forget nor, nor or misunderstand that uh you know for example use the you can think of it with the analogy of eating right if you're like going to the gym and like you're going to be bulking if you have already the proper nutrients from you know the macros and nutri nutrients that you're supposed to have there's nothing bad about eating chocolate for example because that's not going to ruin your entire thing right you already did what you need to have um, similarly you know uh, i think ideas like oh stop playing video games if you play video games you're not a man but these are really meme advices that doesn't really help anyone like again what are you going to do right so um you, maybe some of you have heard the kind of like the david goggins or jocko willing kind of advice wake up at 4 a.m okay i woke up at 4 a.m now what like what am i gonna do at 4 a.m if you can't fill in that time like with something then that advice just is a complete waste right so it's better to it's it's better to i think kind of start with the basics right and this is kind of where we get into the clean your room territory a little bit I and mean, that's certainly a good start in basics but um what we want the general problem i think the general problem that is the source of all of these issues is value self-worth right uh in psychology the highest stage of human happiness is i think it's called self-actualization or or you know self-worth or something like right self-actualization and that kind of is that you have found a purpose you have you're working on that purpose you're on the straight path or maybe you've already achieved it achieved it and so you feel in comfort with your own person right uh, you might not like psychology and this kind of stuff you might think oh this is secular i don't like it but it's still a good idea to kind of think as well how much do you value yourself as a person well if you if you look like a fat disgusting prick and you look at yourself in the mirror that's going to do something to your brain right you're going to look at yourself in the mirror you're going to be like wow i look disgusting oh i look like someone who's who's called josh all the time i look like a fat disgusting idiot right it's going to do something to your psyche uh, and i'm not going to say something like you know oh have value because lewis you pointed this out uh, men are told that they don't have any value let me just tell you that's totally bs that's totally not true uh, men do have value it, it might not be recognized in society but men each individual man does have their own you know own value and something they can bring up to the table and this can be something very simple and basic such as carrying logs maybe you're just really good at it because you had the proper work ethic and consistency and some others they can do more complex tasks but they're just kind of have other kind of deficiencies right so each man still have worth, even if they weren't able to do that at that moment. And so what I will advise to people is kind of just don't, don't cut, don't try to find self-actualization from other people. So here's an example. We can, I guess we can start with 
the other gender, right? Maybe how people are viewed, or maybe with gym or something like that. But the example I'm going to give is a lot of men, for example, think I don't have any girlfriends. That means I'm a worthless person. So what have you done right now? You have defined your own worth and value as a man to different people, to people outside of yourself. Even worse than that, you have defined your value and worth to a woman. You're saying, if this woman doesn't like me, I am a worthless man. Who inserted this idea to you? Because this is not a natural idea. This is not an idea that you could find in a religious text. Nowhere in the Bible does it say anything regarding that, right? In fact, scripture says the opposite. You have, you know, it pretty much says you have worth because you're made in the image of God. That's like the most important thing. It doesn't say you don't have value if you don't have women. In fact, it's doing the opposite thing. It's usually saying run away from evil women, right? Because they're going to ruin your life. So your value is not dependent on how many friends you have, how many women you have, how, many, how much money you have, how high your status is. These are things you want to have. But this doesn't define who you are as a person. And so I think kind of starting from that is very important. This is why kind of simping is a, is a popular thing that goes on goes around all the time um you know men just think oh if i just message ten thousand women and one of them respond to me i'll like i'll feel good about it and usually what happens is actually that doesn't really help um so then the obvious question okay i get the point how can i actualize value and self-worth um i think the best easiest example again we're going to go from base uh different principles but i think we can start with the gym example lewis i think that's kind of uh the simpler one. So the example of the VIP mirror, again, you look at yourself in the mirror. Are you proud of yourself? Do you look at yourself in the mirror and you say to yourself, wow, wow, look at me. I got good shoulders. I got I got good chest. You know, my biceps looking good. Or are you looking at yourself in the mirror and you're saying, wow, I look disgusting. And do you have the time to change that? Most of you people watching this, if you have the time to watch the stream, you have the time to change that. Okay, let's be real. If you have the time to go on YouTube and watch the stream, you can probably change that. You have the time. Maybe you have even the money to change that. And so what would you say then, kind of the gym fitness tips as an example? Because I want I, I have ideas myself too. I just don't want to monologue too much. <laughs> yeah, um, I'd say that um, a lot of the kind of nowadays, a lot of people put a huge emphasis on the gym to other young people. And the gym is really just a means of attaining fitness and attaining physical kind of looking good, right? Well, that's the general idea of when you're talking about the mirror. So the gym is a good thing. Um, <clears throat> the other thing you can do is getting to in like an athletic sport. So you don't necessarily, in my opinion, people may disagree with me on this. I don't think you necessarily have to be lifting weights. But as long as you're doing something that is overall athletic for your body, uh, whether that's, um, you know, swimming or, uh, you know, football, rugby, these kinds of games, what kind of games that engage your core muscles as well, you will look better. It's just a fact of reality. Um, so gym is good. The only issue with the gym is I would highly recommend that if you do go to the gym to lift weights, you find someone, at least one other person to go with in order to in order to motivate you because it's very easy to lose self-motivation if you're going to the gym uh on your own so the the ideal thing is to find someone else to go with um so that's the, the first the simplest thing i would say about all that yeah uh in terms of i think there's you have a point with kind of athletics thing i think like you don't have to go to the gym. Like, don't go to Planet Fitness and do, like, stupid workouts, by the way. Like, if you're going to do something, take it seriously. But um, I will also add, you know, any type of, you know, wh whatever sport you like to do, I think that's kind of a good start. If you're going to do uh, bodybuilding, right, it's, it's a good idea to kind of know what you're doing, but also kind of, like, get into the habit of doing things. There's a couple of options, actually. You can either do bodybuilding, you can do calisthenics. And when I say calisthenics, I don't, I'm not meaning you know, Planet Fitness, stupid stuff like, oh, do squats on an uneven surface. Like, that's stupid. That's idiotic. When I speak of calisthenics, I mean chin-ups, pull-ups, push-ups, you know, squats, things like that. Uh, compound exercises that work all of your muscles and just kind of make you more athletic, right? So 
uh and, it, and it's actually like very low cost too like you you might not even have to go outside to do it you, you just need some equipment in order to be able to do it uh, for a lot of what we're talking about so you don't have to kind of like go to some place some physical place you you might want to do it but you don't really have to uh, and uh Rush made a good point about this um he base he he's an advocate for avoiding gym not because it's useless but because it's like you know, he wants you to avoid the vanity purpose, right? So why are you going there? Again, um, I gave you the example of like your physical appearance, but your physical appearance shouldn't be the only motivator, right? What is the benefit of doing a sport regularly? First of all, it's discipline. You know, you see the effects of it on your body, but I'm ignoring that. It has good effects on your discipline. Depending on the sport that you're doing, for example, I uh, what I do every week or every, bi-weekly I go to Nicaea uh, with my cousin, and uh, if we have friends along, we bring them along the way as well. But usually with my cousin, I go to Nicaea, we meet with my relatives there, and we play football, right? That's what we do. And, you know, mo mo a lot of them are family members, but like some of them are like, you know, distant cousins and things like that. But it's like still, you know, you still meet people, you still do a sport with people, right? And, you know, this is just, you know, because I'm in Europe, this is specific to me, but... In America, I mean, I, I, you know, usually people go hiking. That's kind of like what I have in, like, have in mind. But like in the American equivalent is there probably. Like there's something that people regularly do. I know that it's you, uh, people usually just sit on the couches and don't do anything. But I, knew, I know that there are some people that do something. Do it with that person. Even if you don't really like it, use it as an opportunity to actually at least yeah. communicate with that person, right? Uh, this is kind of like the yeah. one other principle I wanted to get into is that you don't have to do anything just to like do that thing. What I mean by that. So for example, people are unable to do small talk. They can't do small talk. They can't talk about the weather for five minutes. And they're like, mm, I, the whole world point of conversation is talking about serious stuff. I can't, uh, you know, small, small talk with normies. That's a waste of time. You know, no, you just got filtered, bro. You're getting filtered by like the most basic filtering mechanism, which is small talk. Uh, if you can't do that, then you have serious problems and you need to do something to fix that. And maybe you can just genuinely try to have small talk just like for five minutes with someone and then say, you know, it was nice seeing you, goodbye. And that, what's that gonna gain you? You know, if you have their phone number, for example, you can just call them and say, hey, you know, I was planning to do this with some people, right? Even if you don't really like it, right? So for example, you might not like hiking, but you might just say, well, at least I'll be I'll be doing it with someone, you know, I'll be doing it with someone and we can just talk about stuff. And again, you don't have to talk about the intricacies of Eastern theology with like any random person. Right. You might be excited about it, but if you're going to talk about something serious, let them open up that conversation. Like for me personally, again, personal example, not because I'm so great, but because it's beneficial and the easiest thing that I can access from my mind right now is. You know, with my relatives, for example, I don't talk about religious topics unless they open it, right? Unless they say something about it and want my take on it, I usually, you know, zip my mouth because I understand that uh, I understand that it might be divisive because it's a foundational belief topic that people are potentially going to be disagreeing with, right? Politics, if you can, you know, with, with politics, for example, if you cannot take it seriously, I remember I visited a relative's house. We had like six, seven people in there. And like, they were like all shouting about like politics, but everyone knew that we were all doing it in good fun. We were just like having a laugh, right? Like, you know, you can, you can engage it in that. But if you take it, but like, for example, if I took it seriously, like super seriously, and I try to debate people, like I actually debate people, that will just ruin the mood. And I feel like a lot of people who are like socially autistic, like they will do that because they don't see the value in just having a law. And I think this might just be something that you over time learn. And if you want to learn this, my recommendation, especially if you're Orthodox, attend, you know, after the liturgy, attend the meals, right? Attend the, attend the parish right. meals after the liturgy. Do you mind if I butt yeah, in here? Go, yeah, go in. Because, um, yeah, because you're, um, bring in something else. I kind of want to tie a couple of things together. So someone in the chat mentioned um, martial arts. I think that's a good, a very good example of something that's not necessarily weightlifting that you can do that's extremely good for your physique and your health. 
Um, also, a lot, just as a side note, a lot of people in the online weightlifting com community kind of shit on cardio. I don't think that's right. I think cardio has its place because it has unique benefits for burning visceral fats. Um, and another thing is when you're training, you should be really pushing yourself to the absolute limit. Uh, ideally, you should be sweating buckets. Um, and the more you, um, I think I remember talking to this about you is you need to be concentrating when you do workouts, right? So it's preferable in my opinion, not to actually listen to any music or have your mind distracted because you should be focusing on activating those muscle groups. And you'll, you'll know if you have never gone to the gym before, you'll understand that you kind of go through this process of realizing when you're lifting, when like you were lifting wrong. And then when you start lifting correctly, you'll notice the difference because you're, you're, you're genuinely feel like a neural connection to a, a different muscle group that you couldn't independently move beforehand. And this is a, a, an important aspect of uh, gym. You brought um, a couple of other things that doing exercise helps you with is um, confidence. I mean, people talk about it a lot, but it, it puts you in this kind of discipline mindset you mentioned. And so you just generally feel a lot, a lot better. Um, the funny thing is if you don't go out and get exercise, you will kind of build up this energy and you're not letting it out, which just kind of perpetuates this cycle of the depression of the lying in bed, funnily enough. Um, so one other thing would be to just have a normal bedtime. And this is another basic thing, like just have literally a normal bedtime, ideally 11 p.m. or before you should be going to bed. So you can wake up at a decent time in the morning. Um, and this is supported by many studies. Uh, I mean, yeah, studies show, but it's true. You know, you, you, you shouldn't really be sleeping past or going to bed past midnight you're having normal bedtime. And you'll be able to do that more easily if you're getting exercise because you'll feel tired during the day. You'll want to go to sleep sooner. You'll also eat more, right? So you won't be losing weight. Um, you brought up, um, I think you said playing football with your, uh, your friends and family. Is that right? So that this ties into an aspect of another important thing that shouldn't be neglected is um, play, like just the generic concept of play and the idea of actually engaging in something that's competitive, right? Uh, as young men, there is a need to have a competitive outlet. And so whether that's in martial arts, playing football, um, and this is why a lot of people play video games, right? Because a lot of a lot of young men play video games because there's this competitivity aspect to it and video game consumption is i mean it's not inherently bad it's it, it should be limited the problem with it is that it's, it's a huge time sink so you get this kind of you know chemical release and enjoyment from playing it but you're it's 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 you're not getting much more out of it than that uh you might be getting some kind of um kind of uh lateral thinking, IQ development sort of thing as well. That's a possibility. But it's not really doing an awful lot for your physique. Um, so I'm not saying it's bad, but I would say it should be like all things uh, in moderation. So yeah, those, um, those are some things I think that connect with what you were saying. Um, yeah. Yeah. It, like the video game example is a good one because it's like, again, people will say, stop playing video games. I mean, I played, you know, I played FIFA with my cousin and two of his friends and through that i bonded with my cousin i bonded with his friends and i got to know them and next time i see them they'll be going to be like hey i remember you and like two three times maybe not and then like it'll just be like hey let's exchange phone numbers maybe we can hang out right like if if you know our mutual friend doesn't have time we can just hang out and it just opens up more and more and more connections and i don't have to agree with everything they believe again i'm an orthodox christian i think most of his friends, for example, know that and they're like cool about it. Um, and like the, I'm living in Turkey, right? Like you're you guys are American. Like you could just say, I'm yeah, I'm Christian, too. Like and like it'll be smooth sailing. But like, you know, some of them are, you know, Muslim. Some of them are just secular. Some of them are atheists. And usually in, in the areas where I live, that's like seen as something, you know, like what I what I am is seen as like, like a little bit abnormal. But it's like it's like whatever. Right. Like it's. It's not super like it's not as if I said I'm a Satanist like that's obviously super abnormal right you shouldn't be a Satanist obviously uh, but the point is that again 
how like you you know i have so many videos on my channel about orthodox theology I'm like obsessive about it and how much of it do i talk outside barely any because i understand that if i just bring it out out of nowhere it's going to cause discomfort it's going to make things awkward it's going to be like like i felt the awkwardness when i see friends and like other people just randomly talk about something she's so like oh yeah did you know that the politicians are pedophiles like, I just feel like, oh my goodness, what is he doing? Like, that's just going to be, like, at least ease it up a little bit, you know? Like, if you really want to talk about it, just ease it up. Like, hey, Hollywood is actually kind of screwed up if you didn't know about it. Like, just, like, ease it up a little bit instead of just, like, you got to know and understand that what people are here for, right? When they want to talk to people, they don't want to feel depressed and be like, wow, you know, the world sucks, crazy stuff's going on. Oh my gosh. They want to be like, hey, man, it's a good time hanging out with you. Let's like just talk about stuff and just enjoy good stuff together, right? Whether that's going to be playing FIFA together, we're going to play for two hours. And it's like, oh, yeah, you beat me. It was something competitive, right? I mean, it's pretty much indistinguishable from like playing like a normal sport as a competition between friends. Um, but obviously, there's a point of not overdoing it because you don't want to just stay at home on discord with a friend who you can meet right it's I, I will say go meet out with him at like an internet cafe because he's at your physical vicinity it makes it matter a lot more and at first you can just hang out right um uh, i think i like what i'm kind of focusing on is kind of just you know understand that the physical vicinity like the fact that you can see people you can see these people and you can uh, engage with them directly is so, it does something to your brain when your physical engagement is the computer like you're having right now right it's like a parasocial relationship i mean um and that's another thing that's a huge symptom because i see on twitter on youtube etc all the time people having parasocial relationships like for example a, a celebrity will post something on her tiktok and someone will be like oh my gosh you're my bestie Dude, he doesn't even know who you exist. Like, she doesn't even know you exist. Like, who are you? You're just some random person and you're acting like old buddy buddy up with, with this person. Like, I get this myself sometimes. And I'm not trying to be mean, but like, like people sometimes be like, oh, wow, well, you know, we're friends, right? Haha. -ha. It's like, I don't know you. Like, who are you? Like, what the heck? What are you doing, dude? You're, you're creeping me out a little bit. You know, you're, you're butting me up. You're trying to make me feel good, but like, you're doing the exact opposite because then it's like, you know, Treat me like a normal person, I'll treat you like a normal person. I'll probably be really goofy. Like, normally, that's how I am online, at least. Uh, but I think a lot of it stems from just not experiencing it, right? Because in high school, a lot of people tend to be loners. They don't go out with people. So they usually hang online. They meet these, like, strange communities. And then they end up, you know, getting into these weird beliefs. You either get into far right wing stuff, which is like, at least you're not cutting your penis off, but then you get into some, <laughs> you know, other stuff. And then, you know, okay, now what's going on, right? Um, but I well, think you're, you're yeah. from the normal world, right? Because yeah. on, online, uh, people were, I mean, it's, it's kind of obvious, but people don't really talk about it much. But being online kind of removes this filter that we normally have in everyday life of, things perhaps being better left unsaid, you know, um, and courtesy for another individual, but online that filter just kind of uh, disappears. With respect to spending time with other people, I think you're totally right. Um, and, you know, if there are people who don't share your worldview, that's what, that is good because you need to have that interaction. You need to have that kind of um, tension sometimes. It keeps, you, it keeps you awake, it keeps you aware. I would say on top of that though, that you do also need to try and share community, which is why you mentioned the uh, lunch after church or coffee hour after church. You do need to try and share community with people who have the same worldview as you, because one, this will keep your sanity. <laughs> this will help you keep your sanity. And, and number two, the ideal for a young male, in my opinion, would be to find two, maybe three other Orthodox Christian men and live together live together in an apartment or something like that and take care of a home a, 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 a living space together and and pull in more into your not not necessarily into your living space but into your town or your city or wherever you live and then have a network like that right i think that 
this would be an ideal. And um, I'm seeing it lived out in a city where I, where I am now. And I just see that and I'm like, man, I really wish I had that, you know, maybe four years ago that I had that option. So if you can try and organize that, if you can try and be the cause of that in your life, it will be, I think, extremely beneficial for you in, in, in just a number of ways. You'll have people to keep you accountable to not being depressed. You'll have people to motivate you in that sense. And you'll have people to whom you can just speak openly, right? Like this is important. Um, so yeah, I have some other basic things to mention, but yes. Yeah, I wanna. I forgot about forgot to mention is like the fellowship stuff, right? Like coffee hour after church. I wanna give you examples that drive me nuts. Okay, this drives me crazy in my like the church I go to. I know a couple of other converts that go to go to my church. It drives me crazy. I'm the only one that's speaking with the people there. Like it's it's it makes me mad, right? And there's a, another friend of mine, but like I got him to do that, right? Like I got him to kind of like, you know, I kind of eased him into it because that's my role because I'm his elder. You know, in Turkey we have this kind of like elder, you know, like junior relationship. Like that's a normal thing, right? Like if you're if you're above someone by like four or five years, you're supposed like it's your responsibility to kind of like look after him. So like I obviously kind of like eased him into it, and he. Did it like he's great at it, but like other people sometimes come to a church converts, you know, Turkish converts, they don't talk to anyone. They go to church, they leave home. What the heck are you doing? Like, what's what's wrong with you? Like, are you insane? Like, you're you're treating the church like a I'm not I don't I don't want to say it like I don't like you're really treating it like a common place that just anyone can walk in and walk out. Like a fast food restaurant. Yeah. And like, no, it is your risk. You have to, like, you have to stay after liturgy, like go with the people, right? Like you, they go to, they go to the cafeteria, go with them. You have to sit someplace. People are going to look at you. And eventually one of them is going to be like, who the heck is this guy? Like, well, let me, let me try to see who, who, what is this guy on? Yeah. Also put yourself forward as a, as service to your parish, right? As, mm -hmm. You know, to, to, because this is also going to build your value, right? You should go up to the priest or to the starets or whatever and say, what can I do to serve the parish? Full stop, you know, and then they will tell you and then you can do that. Yeah. Okay. And this, this will bring you value to the community. You make you mm -hmm. part of the community and you'll feel integral and you'll feel important and yeah. you will be important. Yeah. Um, and someone mentioned in the chat, of course, you know, this all presupposes, right? Basic thing, go outside, you know, mm -hmm. go just, if, if you haven't been outside, just go outside, you know, touch grass meme, right? Like touch <laughs> grass, like, seriously. Yeah. Cause you just need the sunlight on your skin and it will, I mean, if I don't know about you, but when I've spent, I've, cause I've had depression moments before in my past, but then when I step outside and the sun hits me, cause I have to go outside at some point. I feel like in my brain, some like rewiring happen. I don't know how to explain it, but like, I just, I just feel like something's changed. Something and in your brain says, I, call a friend right now and tell them to meet up. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, so yeah, but also on top of just going outside, the, the next kind of further thing on top of that is to travel. And I don't necessarily mean to leave your country and travel to another country. You don't have to do that. But just visit another place that is that is interesting to you. And some places may not initially seem interesting, but I remember because we are deracinated, there are things we might not know about nearby villages and nearby towns mm -hmm. or nearby cities or other parts of our own country. Um, and so this kind of idea of having a sense of adventure is also important, right? There should be a fostering of a sense of adventure and kind of, and this is the case with just, pushing yourself out of depression is you do need to have that moment where you just where you become the cause where you take control where you decide i i'm just going to force myself to do this yeah you know i just have i have to force myself to do this otherwise i'm the, never yeah, getting the, out the, the most difficult part with dealing with like people who have that have those episodes or moments is that like your advice is going to sound very stupid because it's like you're just telling me to go outside it's like uh, yeah, kind of, because it's like, what, because here's, what is your problem, right? Like what, what does a depressed person do? A depressed person does nothing. They're devoid of activity or let me just activate the, the autistic theology moment here. They don't have energy. 
But if you don't have energy, you don't have essence, you don't have movement, you don't have life, right? So well, I'm not saying just go outside and talk to people. I'm saying have life, like have, you know, re-engage your normal, proper, you know, human nature and activate it and move it. You know, that's yeah. the problem is that you have to it's just a state of comfort zone. Yeah, it's not even comfort zone. I think it's just like just a zone at all. Like, for example, a comfort zone can still be like, I, I guess I have a different, you know, like the comfort zone example is a good one. But like, for example, when you hang out with your friends, that's a comfort zone. But that's a comfort zone you kind of earn because like you had to like, it mm. sounds insane in, to say this. Effort. But, involved yeah. effort. But like calling someone, hey, let's meet is like, that's like, takes so much effort psychological effort to a lot of people but i understand why because a lot of people are hardwired to like fail all the time from their child a lot of them right they like treat it as these like you know because of participation trophy culture right they all think that they're special they realize they aren't and then they think like everything i do is a failure and that's another thing is that uh, i want to get into which is going to be a bit theological is the sin of pride i think my personal opinion is that I think a lot of people who are socially inept are just prideful people. Here's an example I want to give you. A lot of like socially inept people are like, they think they're very intelligent. They think they're very smart. Or they think that they are better than most people in some way. So for example, oh, I know about the conspiracies, the trouble. I know about the nose people. I know about the tribes, man. I'm much better than you guys. I'm the best person ever. And it's like, and you guys don't listen. You just get fooled by their tricks. But you get fooled by other kinds of tricks. right? You get fooled by these people that you hate. They are fooling you because they're enjoying life while you supposedly sold other secrets. And how are you? You're miserable. So you fail at life. right? You're not, you're not advancing to anything in life. right? You're not the guy who's like playing an RPG, have a level 5 Pokemon, and beat the Elite Four. You're not that guy. You're just the guy who started new and you... Think that you got everything right and the mechanics and everything, and you're just like, oh, I'm not gonna play this. But that that's not really how it works. So I think the general problem is that a lot of people just don't want to be like, you know, treat other people the same manner they treat themselves. I think that needs to, you know, this pride issue needs to be addressed by a lot of people. Like these people, yeah, they do deserve your time and your effort and energy. But we also need to understand at the same time, we don't want to go to the other extreme. So, for example, if your friend circle, and this is a huge and serious warning, this usually happens online, it also happens in real life, but watch who you're with. If your circle is only online people, which isn't necessarily bad, like it, it's bad, but it's like you can, you can meet good people online still. You can meet people that are going to change your life. But like if your only circle online is like all you do is just circle jerk about what you already believe, which is like boring. It gets boring after a couple of months and you just like talks back about other people you don't like. You just post memes and you just maybe play video games with people you've never met in your life. And you think that's like you're having a moment with them when tomorrow you're going to wake up. You're going to be like nothing happened yesterday. Right. You're doing all of these things uh that you need to you need to probably leave those people or at least transition uh because a lot of these people they don't care about you if you left the next day they'd be like you know oh that guy sucked no one none of us like the like them already right you don't need to spend so much time effort and energy for these kinds of people and people do actually do that while they're in their comfort zone this is the kind of strange thing is that they're in their comfort zone, but they're still expanding a lot of energy. It's just energy that just is used for absolutely nothing. And this is the value of people of uh, doing something with people, whether they are of your own worldview or not. That's that's really the value of it because you're, you're going to feel like, wow, people that don't agree with me on fundamental things are actually really good people because you already have such low expectations. <laughs> It happened to me a couple of times, right? But then I realized, like, oh, it's just my love expectations. Um, and uh, that's kind of, that's, I think I had, like, so, oh, yeah. And also coffee art thing, before I forget. Um, I see people joking about this and being like, oh, you know, um, we have a lot of people saying base stuff. They're fed posting coffee hour. Like, what the heck is wrong with you? Like, 
you can't fed post online you got to do it in real life and coffee you're gonna again you're gonna talk about high energy expenditure topics that's just going to be for a lot of people very awkward divisive and it's going to be cause for kind of just discomfort for a lot of people i mean they didn't sign up for that uh you know if people are receptive to it then that's a different idea right like if i'm at a table and people are talking about you know how much ukraine sucks i'm going to join in because it's like that's a like that's a point of agreement that we have but if like someone brings up something and i can see people's faces they don't want to talk about this i'm going to be like so uh the weather is really good right isn't it yeah uh did you see the football game yes like that's what i'm gonna do not because i want to really talk about it but because it's like someone's just making a case for why no one should hang out with that person that's the general theme is that a lot of people are making a great case an advertisement on why no one should take them seriously and when then these people come online and they treat themselves very seriously and it becomes so clear what kind of a, what kind of people they are um at the very least anyways do you have anything to add or maybe you should go uh, to a different... no I, yeah. I kind of wanted to change tack on yeah just some other basic things um with respect to like diet and eating mm -hmm. you should cook your food from scratch Oh yeah. You should learn to be able to cook your food from scratch. Um you know, you can buy a ready meal every now and then if it's something that you really need out of convenience, but you should force yourself to cook your food from scratch. And we live in one of the upshots of you know modernity is that we have access to the internet and we can look up all kinds of recipes that make it super duper easy uh, to know how to cook from scratch. So buy your food, you know buy organic food and cook it from scratch that's what that's you need to learn how to cook because not only is this going to help you in the context of relationships but if you know how to cook it is another thing that increases your value as an individual you know you can cook for yourself you can cook for your friends you can organize a meal you can cook for your friends you can host a party you can do all these kinds of things right so that's one that's one thing i'd say um also, another another uh, obvious one, but it gets kind of under under mentioned is make sure you drink plenty of water during the day and also consume a decent amount of salt. Um, and you sh you it's good to supplement vitamins and minerals as well, like vitamin D, zinc, uh, magnesium. These kinds of things oils these are all important things to supplement if you can it's a bit of a pain when you have to you know but you should supplement those things um some people talk about avoiding sugar um like some people just i'll just completely cut sugar out of your life i think that that it's not invalid i think it's okay but there are kind of and this is something that i'll talk about later but there are, there are parts of cultural like food culture in different hegemonies depending on where you're from that involve sugar and you should be participating in your own culture right for example um moroccans like drinking mint tea but it's kind of traditional and obligatory to have sugar in mint tea so in that case if you're you should it's, it's okay to do that and there's nothing wrong with having sugar it's just another one of those things where it's you know have it in moderation like David mentioned earlier, you know, if you're if you're healthy in all these other aspects of your life, it's okay to eat chocolate every now and then. <laughs> you know, just um, don't uh, don't overdo it, right? Um, so yeah, those are the big, kind of basic things I'd say. One thing, one thing I realized when you were explaining the point about cook your own food is that there are a lot of things that we can do in our lives that are like very basic things, right? That actually would require a lot of activity. Like cooking your own food, for example, that requires some sort of, you know, you need to spend some time, spend some effort doing this, right? Maybe instead of playing that round of Dota, maybe cook yourself food, right? As an example. Um, another one is uh, like cleaning, for example, right? You need to, maybe you need to like, not only just clean your room, clean your house, right? And you might realize, you know, oh, there's some parts of your, of your house that, you never really thought about, but it has some interesting things within it. Something like that. Like, know your own living space. I mean, it if it restricts you so much, but you don't even know it, 
that's like double the despair, right? That's double the horrid experience that you can have because you don't know everything out your own house, but it limits you. It's a cage. I can't imagine anything more insane than that. Um, and that's kind of like what I want to add to like that kind of stuff. It's like if, if you notice all of these minor things that your mom, dad does it for you, and it's your too, too, you're too cool for you, like you can realize actually, you know, if you do all of these things, you're going to feel a little bit, bit more fulfilled, but then you're going to think you're going to look at your own house and feel a lot more comfortable. Now, Paul Scullis makes a good point about this. So he gives the example of, well, he's all about ceiling heights, right? So I have, I have high ceilings, actually. Uh, Paul Scullis pretty much argues that the space you live in pretty much defines your character. And like, if you have a low ceiling, you're going to feel a lot more limited. You're not going to feel comfortable. You're not going to be feeling creative. You're not going to feel, you know, you're going to, you're going to basically think of yourself as, again, a slave that is in prison. Uh, if your living space has a lot of room, if your living space has order, if your living space has all of these things that are just normal for living space for there to be, I'm not saying decorate your room. Like, look at me, nothing's decorated because... You know, it should be decorated, to be honest, but you don't need overt decorations, right? So you can see from, <laughs> I mean, I don't follow this advice, but like if you have basic decorations in your room so that it doesn't look like an asylum, then again, that's going to give character. The, the, the point is not to give character to your own house. It gives character to your own soul because it's something you look at every single day, right? So you have to get used to it. Again, the mirror example, you look at yourself in the mirror, you see yourself, you look like a guy who everyone's going to call Josh, hey Josh, come catch this, you fat, disgusting piece of crap. That if that's what you look like, you're gonna think of yourself as that. But yeah, I, I don't understand yeah. these rooms that have like a zillion posters plastered yeah. everywhere. You know, zillion uh, like, posters with Funko this is, Pops. This is, this is chaotic. Like it, it doesn't focus the mind. You know, what I mean, it, it's distracting. Mm -hmm. I think. Uh, uh, I, I, I mean, I, I, there's nothing inherently wrong with it, but I. I've never had a room that had loads of posters. I have like maybe a calendar and a few pictures and stuff in my room, like yeah, of, Im of important things from my life that I like to remember. And that's yeah. pretty much it. Yeah. Um, uh, I, <laughs> uh, I, yeah. it reminds me of some YouTuber. I'm not going to say his name, but uh, some guy who's like icons are idolatry, but his room is full of Marvel posters and Funko Pops. So like, yeah, this is what happens. You relegate your you relegate icons to idolatry, and you substitute actual idols into your room. So like, that's also another thing. But, um, uh, yeah, I think I don't really have anything else to add. Like, well, what else do you have? Like, maybe as a change of topic or anything like that. Um, just to add on to the kind of general physical uh well-being uh value thing um in terms of looking good um you should smell good as well right i mean you should be putting on deodorant morning night you should perhaps invest in cologne invest in some nice clothes you know I smell like good. Invest, invest in some nice clothes you know like um like trousers belt shirt blazer you know Things that, I, I, things that don't look casual, right? Things that mm -hmm. look more, 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 more business, more, more proper. Um, you know, if you and here's the thing is, if you have facial hair, um, you should you should probably get it shaped. You should yeah. probably get it trimmed. Uh, wanna, there's this wanna, wanna like meme that. meme in the author world where it's like, if you're a man, you have to have a beard. Like, I totally disagree with this. If you have a chiseled jawline. And then you grow a beard and it just covers your jawline. You've, you've just it's, it's served you no purpose. Do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. um, so, <clears throat> and if you don't have a jawline, then grow a beard and shape your beard, yeah. <laughs> right? So that's what I'd say on that. Uh, yeah, that those would just be the last kind of points. Yeah, on yeah, yeah. Uh, the beard stuff. Yeah, that's uh, so. A lot of people who are orthodox, they're fascinated by beards, right? Because they see clergy and bishops with beards and they think, oh, these guys are wise sages. I can trust what they say. And then, like these like beardless, 
Westerners, I don't know, ugh, doesn't like, you know, they, you know, and that there's a point to that, right? There's a, there's an actual symbol and purpose behind the beard, right? But if you're 20 something, you can't grow a proper beard and like you grow it out, you're not clergy and you just look bad. Don't, you know, I, I see a lot of people use the excuse of I'm orthodox. I don't need to shave. No, you do. You do need to shave. Uh, some of you do need to shave. I I had this light switch flip because I used to kind of think that way a little bit. Um, but like a couple of months ago, I like I wore a like massive jacket and like beanie and like a lot of different things. And like I looked at myself in the mirror. I looked homeless. I looked genuinely homeless. Like, oh, my gosh, like just there's no way a person will believe I am not homeless. Like with the glows and everything, it's like, hey, man, can I get some dollars? I need dollars to survive in the cold, man. Like, that's what I look like. And I, like, that's when I realized I got to fix this. Like, this has to go because, like, I don't want to look at that in the mirror, right? Uh, <clears throat> so I think, like, you also need to realize, I mean, in, in Western Christianity, um, clean shaven was normal, right? Being clean shaven was normal. And even though we're Orthodox, or some will say Eastern Orthodox, you don't have to exclusively follow an Eastern way of living as someone who is in the West or someone who lives in a country whose culture in a, in whose culture it is normal to shave your beard, right? If you're, for example, but if you're Greek, like if you're in Greece, then it's like abnormal to do so. Oh, you know that's that's something you discuss with your priests, right? But like I'm pretty sure, like most priests are gonna be like, you know, we're not be beard alatters, you know, we're not like. If you have to shave it, shave it. Like, you're not going to lose grace when you do it. Uh, but another reason why, by the way, the, the reason why clergy don't shave their beards is because uh, I think, like, there's a, of the anointing service. So, like, there's kind of, like, that purpose behind it, right? So, like, every part of your body is anointed, including your beard. So, like, if you shave it, you're shaving the anointed part of your body. So, that's kind of, like, it's kind of, like, that theology behind it. Um, I've heard at the very least, Right? That's why monks, for example, they don't shave as well. But if you're someone who is in the world, you don't have to lay those kinds of standards on yourself and use that as an excuse. I think that's kind of like a silly, like silly thing to like, again, in, in the Western Christian tradition, which if you live in the West, you are part of that Western Christian tradition, even as an Orthodox Christian, even if you go to an Eastern Rite church, that's something that people don't really get. You don't need to have a Western Rite in order to, live a western christian culture you don't have to do that right so in for example in turkey it's normal for me to shave right it's something seen normal so i do it because i look better when i'm shaved um i don't have good ge good beard genetics if someone might have better beard genetics works for them like so uh, do you we need to bear that in mind as well uh, there's like some things that you have to do but like let's not look at kind of like these rules and think we have to follow them absolutely um and so i'm not yeah. saying shave your beard or anything like that and look like a woman like i'm not saying that either yeah i uh, just a couple of points someone said in the chat um just buy clothes that look good don't overindulge to what is trending but neither be too abstract i think i think that's generally correct mm -hmm. i think that um i'm not a I'm not saying you should go out and buy like Louis Vuitton or any of these super expensive brands. Uh, there's plenty of clothes that look nice that you can even pick up from charity stores. Um, but just the point is that they should, you know, look nice. Um, here's a big one that we haven't mentioned yet. That's sh pretty much an elephant in the room. Uh, quit pornography. Like you need to stop. Um, and a lot of, a lot of, uh, young men, um, Stuff, uh, struggle with pornography, myself included, I used to. Um, you need to stop. Like, it needs to be completely cut out of your life. And there's ways you can do that. So there's um, accountability um, kind of software uh, that you can use, like Covenant Eyes. And, but it needs to go, you know. Um, this is harmful. It's like, um, it's like how I mentioned food. You know, processed food actually rewires your brain to make you more hungry and less satiated. And the same thing with pornography. Pornography actually rewires your brain. And the only way you can un unwire it is to stop. Um, and that should be something that's kind of terrifying. You know, the fact that this 
can I actually change your brain wiring? You know, how your brain functions. So, um, yeah, that's a, that's a really, really big one. Um, and that is one of probably the biggest ones. Um, it is such a liberating feeling when you're, when you've, yeah. when you, when you've I think, I think the difficulty with that specifically, and that's obviously not an excuse. The difficulty with that specifically is that, um, I want to say it in a very nice, I feel, I feel nice today. Normally I will say, cause all these women are like, I'm not, I will go that route, but like, it's because, you know, modesty has been destroyed just completely. And so it's very easy to get into that temptation. Um, I think the, the, the no corn stuff is definitely, yeah, yeah. Uh, it does revive, like, I mean, it's basically cuckoldry. You know, like, it, like, what are you watching? Like, what are you doing? You're, you're being a cuckold like that. And that does revive your brain and make you crazy. That's why. Uh, and, and like, you, there's also like the point of addiction, right? Like, you know, drugs, uh, what do they do? Right? Like you get high from smoking weed, you feel good. Right? So you want to try the next best thing because eventually you get too used to it. It doesn't give you that, give you the thing that you were chasing for. Right? So you go for maybe meth right? That's what you do. And then just go crazier and crazier and crazier. And eventually you just end up dying. And that's how a lot of drug addicts end up dying. Uh, that's how a lot of addicts just end up dying in general, right? And, and something I realized is that a lot of people, for example, a lot of the gamers, uh, with respect to the gamers, they themselves are realizing your know, video games aren't as fun as they used to be. And I've felt that personally, right? There's only two games I play anymore. I used to play like different games all the time. Now there's only two, right? Um, because it's like, you know, those two are really fun for me, but it's like other than I just don't have the time and energy to devote into learning a new game to have fun. I can't do that, right, anymore. So eventually, the, the thing is, what I'm trying to get to is, to like the depressed viewers, eventually push is going to come to show. That's the thing about comfort zones. Is Eventually, your comfort zone is not going to be your comfort zone. Eventually... You yourself are going to want to get out. Now, there's two ways of getting out. Number one is either you get out by, and that's no good. Or two, you get out by realizing, oh, just do it is actually a good advice all along. And that's pretty much what's going to end up being. Uh, I, but I like to get, get, get back to the point. Yeah, I definitely agree with the beard point. Yeah, the beard, beard the lock tree is like a very popular thing that's going on. It's... Uh, it's unnecessary, uh, definitely. What, el what else was there? You can interrupt me just thinking yeah, about Yeah, I've got, I've got um, an interesting one that um, I've been considering doing. Uh, is actually, I mean, if you get to the point where this is something, you know, obviously you should be setting these goals realistically, right? Like mm -hmm. um, trying to do this, everything we've said all in one go might be very difficult. But start with the basic stuff and then step up, like literally level up, I guess it's kind of a mean thing to say, but yeah, you need to gradually grow. Um, is, and I've been considering doing this, uh, starting to do this recently, is um, keeping a journal, you know? Like at the end of your day, write down what happened during the day. And if you have photos, you can print out little mini photos if you took photos and stuff. Like sometimes I've gone on walks in nice areas and I've seen something that looks really nice. And you know, another upshot of modernity is you can actually physically capture moments of awe in your life and in your phone and then you can put it in something physical like a journal if you want to if you want to keep it and so um this is good because it helps you to reminisce it helps you to remember so you write the date and then you write mm -hmm. what happened during your day and then whatever in a year's time you can look back on your journal and be like oh that's what i did on that day um, and even if you have, let's say, everything's going well for you, you end up having children. Maybe your kids want to know what you were doing when you were 20 years old. Have a memoir of you, you know, and then this might be part of legacy. So this is something I've been considering doing myself uh, recently. Um, yeah. Yeah. And, I, and then after that, I have, these are, I've been mentioning more kind of tangible things, but I have a lot of points about um, kind of uh, – like mindset which i kind of want to go into oh yeah we can get into know. that uh i was going to add the journal point is a good one i was going to get into discipline because for example um for me personally 
uh, you know, what I do, like I've, I probably read like multiple different, like high quality works. Like, but like, how did I do that? Right? Like, it's not because I have free time because, you know, if, if you're going to read an academic work, it's not easy, right? It might be 200 pages. So, oh, I read 200 page stories all the time. I played visual novels all the time. So easy. It's not easy because the difference is you have to take notes, right? You have to like recall those ideas and use them. If you just read it, like, uh, 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 and you don't get anything from it, then it's just going to be useless, right? But what I've done personally is kind of just tell myself, like, I have to do it, right? Accountability helps you a lot more, but just kind of like the self-motivation is also good. Like, just, uh, I have to do it, right? So I will tell myself uh, when I was doing my Bible reading plan, right? Um, I decided, this is before I had my channel, uh, I decided that I need to read the entirety of the Bible if I'm going to be an actual Christian. Because, I, you know, I was new to Christianity. I didn't read the Bible. So I said to myself, I'm going to read the Bible. It doesn't matter if I don't understand some parts of it. I'm just going to have to read it. And I told myself, okay, I'm going to read like, you know, two, three verses of Genesis, couple, uh, the, sorry, two, three chapters of Genesis, couple verses of Proverbs, you know, one Psalm, and then one chapter of the New Testament. Right, that's kind of like a general plan I I I I beholden myself to, and I told myself every time I woke up, I said, "Today I have to read the, you know, I have to read the Bible." I decided reading it every single day, and like when I closed it, I was like, "Wow, that was easy." I only read like four chapters in one day. That's like nothing, but I did it every single day, and eventually, some days I just told myself, "Hey, why don't I read like eight chapters today?" Like. Why don't I read 12? Why don't I read 16? Like, I myself have, like, motivated myself, like, you know, I'm, I'm doing it too slowly. Now I can, like, do it even more. And then I realize, okay, I'm getting a bit burned out. Let's, like, calm down a little bit. Just focus on, like, what, you know, just the daily plan. Just kind of, like, you'll end up, like, get yourself in the tempo. And, and this is actually a lot of um, elders advice this. I've seen elders say that it's a sin not to have a daily schedule. And I think that's a huge thing. You need to have a daily schedule. If you don't have a daily schedule, you that basically means you're not letting yourself have control. You are letting your own fallen flesh take control. And what does that mean? Let me tell you what that means. Our fallen flesh has its own inclinations and passions. So some passions are blameless, obviously, but some are blameful. Now, Either way, you don't want to let those passions, whether they're blameful or blameless, to take control of you. Because even blameless passions can become blameful, right? Eat, you know, hunger is a blameless passion. But if you let it take control over you, you'll end up becoming gluttonous, as an example. Uh, so you don't want them to take control over you. And so you need to kind of make a schedule in order to know, you know, kind of like plan, okay, this is the formation that they will attack. This is how I will respond. I'll encircle them. Basically, what I'm saying is that, you know, just set up daily goals. Say you have to do them and just see how well you're doing with it. And this can be as simple as, again, reading the Bible every single day. I think if you don't read the Bible, like if you don't read minimum the daily readings, I think there's a problem there. You have to do at minimum the daily readings um, of Scripture. That's Scripture is just a perfect example for me personally. Like I, I told myself every single day, I'm going to read at least one high IQ academic work. I just, I'm just going to do it. Maybe it's five, 10 pages. And like, you know, you can do something that might help you. So for example, I got sunflower seeds over here. I, I eat them every time I read something that I don't need to take notes on just because I know sunflower seeds are not good for me health wise, but it's a good trade because it allows me to focus on completing my task. Right. Um, so you want to kind of also like, again, you need to be smart about it. If you're too strict, you will burn yourself out. So like me personally, I, I don't try to be too strict to myself because I know eventually I'll just give up and just like explode and be like, you know, I'll, I'll be dead. Right. So I let myself enjoy something. So I have yeah. chocolate in my refrigerator. I take my eating schedule very seriously. I still eat chocolate like by daily because I enjoy it. I, I like I like the taste of chocolate, and it doesn't ruin my development. Like how yeah. is how just one piece of chocolate going to ruin my development? It's not going to. Our body doesn't work that way. It's about moderation again. You know, um, 
And I think that's people talking about alcohol in the chat. I mean, if you're someone who's finding alcohol is something that's harming you in your life, then yeah, you should also, you should just quit that. You know, if, if you can't have a healthy relationship with certain substances, then that you should probably should just cut them out of your life. Me personally, I'm, I'm, I'm very able to not drink alcohol for months on end. Uh, and if you can do that, then you can have alcohol every now and then in moderation. Uh, and same thing. Uh, I mean, I'll even have a cigar on, on, on special days, you know, I don't think there's anything inherently wrong with that. Um, but just to touch on your point about um, books, uh, or reading more specifically, you should be reading books, right? Um, you know, whether it, uh, for, for the religious, the lives of the saints, you know, if you read the lives of the saints, this will engender piety in you. This will make you, it, it, there's something transcendental about reading the lives of the saints. It's, it's very strange. It, it kind of motivates your religiosity and your piety to pray more and to attend church more fervently. And, and so, uh, of course, praying, you know, goes without saying, because praying and praying will play a key role in quitting pornography, by the way, um, because it will help you be vigilant and aware and Again, it's this orthodox idea of being active in your life and not being passive and not being the one receiving all of these causes and passion because the, the root word of passion is passivity, right? Being passive, being the one who is affected by things, not being the one who is active and being the cause of things outwards. So you should be active and being outward cause of things, right? And prayer helps with that because it's calling to mind. You're saying these words and you should be paying attention to the words. They will be calling to mind all these things, all these truths, and they will remind you again. I mentioned earlier this notion of reminiscence with keeping a journal and constantly keeping all these concepts active in your mind all the time so that you can, so that when, when you're doing something, they're recalled to your mind immediately. You don't have to sit there and think about whether or not you should be doing this. It will be there if you are in touch with your prayer life and you're in touch with, um, these things so yeah don't listen to audio i mean you can listen to audiobooks but read books like actual like books whether they're fiction or non-fiction and the best fiction books to read are the ones that contain some kind of transcendent meaning uh usually these are very very famous historical uh cultural works of literature like for example i mean lord of the rings is one that's you know very well known cs lewis if you're russian is something like dostoevsky you know these are all books that you should be reading perhaps even more than once in your life right so you will tend to find things over and over again that you may not have noticed the first time you read over it um so yeah the, those are um some of the things with that, that relate to the reading uh, that you mentioned i think yeah, that, those are good ones. I mean, I, like, I will go as far as say even reading visual novels is better than, like, not reading at all. And, that, like, visual novels are kind of, like, very trash. Well, they're not really super trash, but, like, you know, it's, like, they're not as good as reading actual books, right? I don't recommend people read VNs, by the way. But, uh, definitely, yeah, yeah. With nonfiction fiction, I think the example you gave is good, like, read those. I usually don't read, like, stuff like from those tears or Lord of the Rings. I just don't read that kind of stuff because it doesn't really super interest me, to be honest. But I think like generally for the general population, it will interest you. Don't read, for example, the who was that who's that fat guy who like writes like stupid pseudo medieval nonsense? Um song of, like what was it again? Oh, Game, of, Martin. Game of Thrones. Yeah, don't read that. Don't watch that trash show. Uh, it's the guy's an idiot. Uh, maybe maybe the book is kind of okay, but it's like don't, like don't bother reading that kind of stuff, right? Like actually, if you want to kind of like live a, if your soul inclines to like high culture, like maybe you're just that kind of a person. I know some people. I had a friend in America who was like that. He's like a high culture kind of a guy, and he's like it's not pretentious. Like he generally is like a high culture guy. You know, I will tell him, you should probably listen to like classical music. If you don't, you should probably read like the, these classical literature books and like get an interest into it because that's just like, just speaks to your soul. Like I can see I'm, it from I'm here. So, I'm so glad you brought this up, uh, yeah. David, because this is where I was going as well, was that you, you should be participating in the high culture of whatever, um, you know, nation you live in. Right. 
uh, you should be participating in those traditions and rituals. Like recently, I went to a concert and they played like it wasn't even expensive, and they played this sort of um well, it was essentially Western liturgical music, but they were you know playing it in concert. And the funny thing is, is that me and my friends were what maybe five of us. We were like the only people who were in our twenties and early thirties who were there. It was the rest of it was just old, older people. Like that. Like think about it. That these kind of key uh, cultural individuals, you know, uh, artists, uh, classical artists, like you mentioned,、um, or you know, other things that 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 basically built or participated immensely to the culture that you live in, are no longer going to be acknowledged within a few generations. If the trends continue, that is insane. This is part of the deracination, right? So you need to, as a young man, you should be participating in, in this culture, in these traditions, and in these rituals, right?、Uh, if I don't know what it's like in Turkey, but I'm sure there are plenty of things in cult in cultural hegemony of Turkey that are historical, that are old, that are contributors to what it means to be Turkish in 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 the in perhaps what would be a Christianized.、Yeah. In the Christianized Turkey, even, right?、And、even need- liberals care about a lot of this kind of stuff. Yeah, in our country. Yeah, in your country, you're lucky. But in my in my country, liberals want to destroy it. They want to、mm-hmm. tear down the statues. They want to,、uh, you know, get rid of these books because they don't like them. But this is what it means to be,、um, you know, it, what does it mean to be British? You know, for example, what does it mean to be French, or what does it mean to be Italian? Right? There's all this culture that you really should be participating in, and you should be.、Um, You should be knowledgeable. You know, you should be able to engage in conversation. You should be able to make references to these things that are informative and that 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 indicate, you know, being cultured. Being cultured is something again, relationships, right?、Um, any high value woman is going to find a cultured man attractive, right? Yeah. So,、uh, those are just、um, some things I wanted to、and、touch that, on. And that gets you- into something I forgot, and I want to talk about as well is what I've learned from my, for me personally. Is that sometimes I just shut down and don't talk. I'm just <laughs> that's that's like a that's a joke, but there's truth behind the joke that I just made. Sometimes I do shut down and I don't talk. Why? Because I just can't talk about something. So, for example, sometimes my friends just talk about something that I should, you know, that I should know, right? You know, and. It's something relating to my country, relating to my culture, and I just kind of am, am like I don't know, right? Something relating to, you know, how Turkey was founded. Something related to the history of this country. If I knew about it, I could make quality comments about it, for instance. And so, what I'm trying to get at is, you know, why can't people have conversations with other people? For example, let's say you can make small talk, but then what? What then can you talk? Um, if you can talk about, you know, something that is normal to talk about, but it also makes you look smart when you talk about it, that's what you kind of want to find, right? And that's kind of like the normal thing to do. You want to be like the top of the normal, like,、uh, you know, I don't like this guy at all. Obviously, this guy is a fraud and all of that. But Tristan Tate gave a good example.、Um, he said like, I was dating this cause I was trying to court this, not court, but like I. Daily, this Kazakhstani chick, and he gave this example of like him talking to a Kazakhstani woman, and like this, you know, and she's like, "Oh, where are you from?" And she was like, "Oh, I'm from Kazakhstan." And then he notes something about recent something, a recent political development in Kazakhstan, and he like, he like, brief, he says, "I briefly made a note on it," and he's like, "His point is basically the difference between me and you nerds." Is that if you knew something like that, you just talk that woman's ears off for like thirty minutes, and like she'd already start hating you. But like I showed her that I am intelligent by just briefly making a note and just like moving on. I actually agree with that point specifically. You know, obviously that doesn't mean I have to like the guy, but I agree with that point because yes, that that's a huge difference between a normal person as high quality and a nerd. A nerd is just gonna. Let his own passions take over and just mouth mouth off like me, like how I'm doing right now. But it's okay because it's my YouTube channel, and and you know you enjoy this. But 
in a normal conversation, I will not, you know, be monologuing all the time because I know that, you know, sometimes people are going to have their own words and I want to get them into the conversation so they can like, at the very least, feel like they're part of it, you know? Or if I see someone who doesn't say anything, I'm going to try to like get him in unless there's a reason why he doesn't say anything. Maybe he just isn't someone that deserves to speak, you know, like some, you know, there are people that do that, unfortunately, but you want to you want to kind of get into you know talk about things that do matter while at the same time not everyone can do that's basically what i'm what i'm trying to say so maybe something like i don't know i can't give american examples but like in terms of like in in the turkish context something relating to ataturk's history that a very few people know that like makes him look good like if I note that in a conversation, talk about it and say like, oh, this is the quality that no one talks about that made him so great. In a normal conversation, people are going to be like, wow, that's so cool. Please marry me. That's what they're going to think. That's what it's going to go in their mind. It's going to, oh, this guy is so smart. You know, he knows what he's talking about. But um, if you talk about these like fringe topics that no one looks into and no one can address, right, then they're going to feel like they're not part of conversation they, t they think that they're just part of your monologue. They're part of your public speech. And that's like the big difference between how Spurgs try to communicate that doesn't work, like me, and how like actual normal people talk. And they kind of, this is all reflex for them. So you, the only way you can like learn this is kind of just doing it and doing it and doing it with people who are like, like who are empathetic to like your struggles. And like, they're kind of like, because like my cousin, for example, he is like that, right? Like we come sometimes talk about this and he like knows like, hey, dude, like uh, he like sometimes tells me, like, hey, dude, like you're like way better than how you used to be because like, you know, this, this and that, right? So, but I think even normies are like very willing to like be open and friendly about this kind of stuff. Uh, though, you know, it's it sounds strange saying that, but it's it's real. Yeah, I think someone mentioned something in the chat. Um, it's, 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 thankfully, we are all made in the image of God. And so we can all recognize uh, beauty. So these, these elements of culture aren't uh, culture, historical knowledge, these kinds of things. You're not shut, shut out to it, right? Um, so uh, beauty, you know, identifying true beauty is something that you should be able to, you know, refine. And that's a good thing. And this should be cultivated. Um, with respect to other things about mindset, um, this may be a little bit controversial, but I would say a mindset of what I would kind of overall say is both uh, one of abundance and also uh, one that's optimistic. Okay. Um, so you you do generally want to be someone who is a glass half full, half full person, in my opinion. Um, because... If you're constantly in a negative mindset, in a pessimistic mindset, you are just de facto setting yourself up for failure in a way, in, uh, I think. And um, I think that what you should do is you should probably prepare for, you know, worst case scenario, but you should hope for the best. And you should be, um, like I said, very, I mean, just very hopeful about outcomes, you know. Um, and but if you if it doesn't work out, then you're prepared for that. Right. Um, and I guess just, you know, no, no one wants to be around someone who's a constant downer. Do you know what I mean? Um, and with, with respect to abundance, I, I think that, and this is something I learned or I've been toying with in my head really recently from talking to people um, who've challenged me on some of these things, is this idea of the modern mind being so, so uh, kind of transactional in the way it thinks about things. Um, you know, everything is about money. You know, this is the classic Judas thing, right? Like someone walks into a church or they see something beautiful. And the first thing they think of is, oh, I bet this money could go to the poor or I, well, I bet this cost a lot of money. It's like, what? why would you even think about that? You know, isn't the, the beauty in itself is worth much more in, in, in a far more, in, in a far more, you know, transcendental kind of currency, right? And so... We shouldn't have this transactional mindset either between people that we spend time with or with respect to um, things that are important, you know, culturally, right? Like I mentioned before. So you shouldn't 
money shouldn't be something that you are constantly thinking about, right? You know, there's this whole thing of like, well, if someone does you a favor, it's like, well, oh, like I owe, I owe, I owe them, right? You know, you shouldn't, you shouldn't have this I owe you mindset. It should be more of a, they did something nice for me. And so I want to continue this relationship that that nice action has created. And so I'm also going to do a nice thing. And then you can continue that reciprocation. And it doesn't have to be an end because it's not transactional, right? Because it's not like they've done a nice thing for you. And so there's been some kind of debt incurred on your end. And once you pay that debt, then that's it. Like, no, you, you want that relationship to continue to grow, right? In, in ideally, right? So I think we need to kind of um, let money have a lot less power and influence over how we think about things um, and also generally have a more optimistic attitude about things in life. I think this, and, and I know it's kind of a thing that you uh, I kind of say, like it's something that's something you can just do. But it is something that you have to, again, it's about this idea of the will, right? At some point, you have to make an active choice to do something, to go outside, to go to the gym, to do these things, right? And this is another thing where it's like, if, you're, if you catch yourself thinking about something in a way that's pessimistic or in a way that's, um, you know, like I said, transactional, you need to just correct your thought there. You should be like, well, am I thinking about this in the right way? I don't think I am. Um, so, yeah. I don't know what your thoughts are about that. Yeah. Uh, I, su- uh, I kind of, I kind of forgot what I was going to say, but the, the point about like, yeah, the transactional thing, before I get into that, the example you gave about, you know, someone goes into a church and they think, wow, you should give this to the poor. You know, that's how autists think. Normal people don't think that way. Normal people don't be like, Oh, you know, this is useful. This is why why should they look at it? It's like, wow, this looks beautiful. This looks great. It's because uh, I think the the reason is because the autist thinks that he has the power to solve the problems of the world and yet he knows better than everyone how to do things correctly. Oh, you got a beautiful church here, but I saw a homeless guy while walking in. Uh, what's the whole point? Aren't you supposed to feed the homeless? Like, they think that, like, like they think that they have the solution to everything in life when really they don't actually they're like the ones that are worst off because most people instinctually know these things these people don't and i think the main problem behind this is because uh, the the lack of socialization in their early childhood and if you have kids if if you're watching this you have kids you need to your child needs to do this at this stage in their life when they're when they're a child they need to get along with people, okay? If your child doesn't get along with anyone, you know, smack that... You know, I'm just kidding. Like, teach that kid a lesson, okay? Teach that kid a lesson. Like, tell them, look, you gotta, you gotta get along with people. You can't just fight everyone. If you're gonna, if you're gonna fight with people, at least beat them up. But <laughs> don't get beaten up. But, like, get along with people have value in your, you know, get along with people, talk to them normally without like getting aggressive. And just because here's an example of this uh, confidence, right? Uh, if a child is, con- you know, has, it socializes with others, has friends when they're a kid and gets along with others and they can easily get along with other people w- w- when they meet, they will not feel any problem trying to take that extra step to meet someone. Right, because for them it's natural; they think it's normal. But most people today, because they are cowards and they they were not raised well, they are too scared to take that extra step because they think that oh, you know, I'm gonna get beaten again, I'm gonna get bullied again. Oh, no, 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 uh, no. You know, normal people, what they want, they can take the extra step. They're willing to condescend to people's weaknesses because for them it's like you know, it's like. To them, they consider it as normal. And so for those people, maybe they might think that way, but they're going to be like, oh, wow, this is still a beautiful place. This is still looking good. No, I still think in their mind, you know, what if, whatever. And then they, they might, you know, if they're going to say it out loud, they might, for example, in, I'm using the church example, right? This can be used as different examples too, but let's use the church example. They might go to the priest and like just conversate, do small talk, and then get to like his question, which is like, Hey, priest, um, I was just wondering, you know, like, uh, 
uh why do you decorate your churches so much like what's the point like is it not more important to feed people? I said, like, that's what they will do. Not just instantly just think about negative things. And this connects to kind of like the general idea of negative people. Um, the, your inner circle. Your inner circle. Uh, what, what I realized from my own personal experiences is that the people who constantly complain, constantly say negative things, constantly criticize others, and... That's like the best thing they do. Constantly gossips about other people. Those are the number one people you need to watch out for and you need to stay away from. Those people will ruin your life. They will backstab you. They will ruin your life. They will treat you like trash. Because at like it just shows the kind of a mindset. They might be great people, by the way. I'm not saying they're evil people. I'm not saying they're bad people. They, they're great pe they might be great people. They might be moral people even. But the thing is, they're going to trick themselves into thinking that you betrayed them, basically, at s some point, right? It's just a ticking time bomb. At some point, they're going to be like, this guy's going to betray me. This guy's betraying me. You know, I got to, you know, uh, I'm being nice to this guy because he betrayed me. So I'm just going to let him off with just like one message. and everything. Sure. Like, that's how these people think. They're delusional. But that's how that mindset usually works, is that all they think is how bad others are without like bringing in something positive or something good or just like if they bring something positive it's like begrudgingly right that really reflects the the kind of a mindset that they have like an example again i'm using examples from my own life not because you guys are supposed to be like me but just because those are the examples i could find from myself right um i was playing a video game with a couple of my friends and like i like normally i'm never like this i'm never this like positive like this positive mental attitude kind of a guy i never am i'm usually quiet and more realistic but like i you know i like to goof around when i'm having fun i used to i like to say nonsensical things and just like to lighten up the mood and like i decided to say to myself i'll just be positive you know i'll just be a, you know i'll just try to lift people up when people are like saying negative things about themselves i'll be like no bro you got this you're all doing good you know it's not even like I'm like licking your feet or anything because like why will I need to do that to you? I don't even know who you are. I don't need to like, you know, pump you up. I'm just being that way because, well, I want to win the game. But also it's like that's just better than being realistic. It's like, oh, yeah, you really messed up there, huh? You suck. <laughs> no, it's supposed to be, you know, we all make mistakes. Just like, you know, forget it. Just keep on playing. That's kind of stuff. And like, you know, people know that like, hey, man, like. I really enjoy playing with you because you're so positive. I'm never positive. Like, I, I'm not that kind of a person. But if you try to be that way, people will genuinely like that. People will genuinely like being around someone that lifts them up. And I think that's the general idea is that you want to be around like-minded people. That's where I'm getting to is that you want to be around with like-minded people with your own worldview. So you want people from your own parish, for example, people of your religion, people of your political views. You want kind of like a core group of those people. You want people around you and you want to lift them up. You don't want to bring them down. Lift them up, right? If there are problems, turn a blind eye. Just like look, look the other way. Like be blind. Like be willingly blind. If it's really big, then just go talk to them and say, you know, I want to let you know so this, 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 and that. If he doesn't listen, bring your friends. If he doesn't listen to your friends, that, this is from the scripture, by the way. Like scripture tells you to do this. Then he is to you like a hedonist, right? Like then it's like he, he doesn't listen to your friends. He doesn't even take you seriously. Like, okay, it's, then I guess he's just not that guy, right? He's not someone worth to be around because he's going to cause problems. Uh, so you want to be, you want to regulate your circle, not extensively, but like regulate it, have people you can trust and just have an uplifting like when I say positive, I don't mean just circle jerking and just like saying, yeah. yes, you're so valid. Don't just like just constantly validate. Yeah. But like just if you're going to criticize, do it positively, right? Do it like yeah. in a great manner and not in like right. condescending yeah. manner. Which and sometimes it's not even like in big things. It can be even in just small things, right? Like today uh, at work, I had a moment and I was talking to a colleague. I was like, oh, how's your day going? He's like, oh, not, not good. And I was like, oh, why? He's like, oh, because it's, it's Thursday and it's not Friday yet. <laughs> and I was like, "My well, Friday's tomorrow, and it's four o'clock." And he was like, "Oh, yeah, 
that's true good point <laughs> it's just small things like that right it's like you, you do got to uplift people because you know you want to be you also want to be uplifted right it's it's you may not admit it but it does you a hell of a lot of good when you have someone who kind of re reframes or reorients your thinking about something that you're treating in a negative way when actually you know it could be a hell of a lot worse <laughs> and they're actually pretty good you know uh we in in western world often have it really uh, really well um and it's a weird thing because I, I i know people who have been to to like africa and stuff and they talk about how people there have a lot a lot less than we do but um they uh they're like 10 times happier than we are here you know it's it's it's, it's really it's really interesting how, how it all works out um but yeah no definitely just you know, try and be positive. Because, I mean, at the end of the day, we're Christians, right? We believe in divine providence. And I think this is one of the big things, actually, now I think about it, that will help you have a more optimistic attitude is, you know, God is providential, right? The, the more you kind of realize the gravity and the seriousness of what that implies, that God is really providential over everything that happens, it it comforts me a great deal. Um and it gives me solace. And we know as Christians how the story ends anyway. Um, so just be optimistic in in the times. And yeah, like David said, this is a really good, really good way to put it was, you know, uplift people around you when they start to say negative things, you know, re reframe their thinking, reframe your thinking. And And it doesn't even have to be corny. Like you can still be like realistically positive right like still just like it just like it's a reorient reorientation of kind of like your general mindset to things and like the thing about confidence and positivity is that it's a self-fulfilling prophecy it's the same thing with negativity and pessimism is that for example if you call yourself a failure you are going to be a failure because you're conditioning yourself to be that way now the comfort behind doing that is that you're loving your expectations so that when you do fail, you're like, well, well, I knew that I was a failure already. Whereas, you know, oppositely, you know, you set up your expectations high and you fall short of it. And it, it does devastate you because like, I expect the way better of myself. I think um, what people mistake, though, and this was helpful for me personally. So, for example, the gym analogy. Um Right, I've been going to the gym for like less than a year, but like it's about to be a year. I'm not strong. I'm not super muscular, right? But do I like look at other people and say that like, oh, look at this guy. He has big muscles. He's got big chest muscles. He's got great back, good shoulders, you know. He's got good legs. Well, actually, my legs are usually better than people's. But, you know, he's got his, his you know, he's got a really good physique. Whereas my, I don't. I don't think of that way. The reason why I don't think of like in comparison is we are competitive. We want to compare ourselves to others. But in terms of growth, you absolutely cannot do that. Your competition is yourself. So for example, um, again, my bicep isn't that big. But my bicep used to be this wide. Okay, it used to be just this like wide. I used to be put my hand around my bicep. It's like it will cover the entire bicep. I was that tiny. Now I'm like... Like it's twice the bit. It's like only the only this part. I forgot what this was called. Uh, wrist, right? So it covers my wrist. So it used to be as wide as my bicep used to be wide as my wrist. Like imagine how tiny that is, and like it's not that way anymore because that's my goal, right? I look at myself what I used to be. I look at myself in the mirror. I don't. I don't look fantastic, but compared to what I used to look. Now that to me, oh, now I feel great because like I feel much better than I used to feel, right? I look at this wrist, I'm like, this used to be my bicep. Now it's not anymore. Now I can't like cover my entire, you know, like even around my forearm, which is like, which still needs work. But like a lot of people like to compare themselves to others and say, oh, this guy's so better off because we're used to like social media, right? It raises up expectations. Ignore other people in that regard. Your expectation is yourself, right? So look at yourself, look at yourself in the past, how you used to be and compare yourself to that. That's like my general advice is that like you in two years later, after watching this, maybe you might follow some of the advices. You might still have a messed up life, but then two, you're going to look at yourself two years ago. Well, yes, my life was messed up, 
But compared to two years ago, heck no, you know. I can't go back to two years ago, you know. Like two years ago was horrible. Like, you, you know, as an example, right? That's what you want to go towards. And then eventually the rest will, you will then become better than others. And also the point with comparison is that if you eventually do get better than others, it's just going to end up being a cause for pride. You don't want to do that, right? You don't want to end up being prideful because you're better than others, right? That's another reason why. It's like you look at yourself, it's hum it's a humbling experience still, even though, you know, it's like I'm better, but compared to who? Myself. Oh, <laughs> like it's like it's cause for pride, but suddenly the pride gets dashed. It's like oh, it's humility because I used to suck. Now it's less, now I'm better than what I used to be. Do you get my point? It's pretty much what I'm want to say that's pretty much what comes to my mind at the moment with regards to this i think another thing with respect to this humility idea that you're kind of talking about is just realizing that you probably don't know everything mm -hmm. like um i mean this is a very basic thing people talk about but just like having some kind of epistemic humility where instead of if someone tells you something that grates or rubs against what you believe um unless it's something that's just so obviously you know wrong or demonic um <laughs> just kind of like hold for a moment and just think about it like just mull on it for a bit do you know what i mean you don't need to just immediately push back against anything that you just disagree with in your head you know um have certain have a certain amount of open-mindedness right because a lot of the stuff that I started doing, I probably didn't want to do. Or I probably had a great with it, um, but they were, you know, changes for the good. I mean, how would I have converted from atheism? So, yeah, I mean, it's I, I think that's a good thing. It's just kind of like there's a lot of knowledge out there. And especially if you're in your early 20s, you're you're like me. You know, you, you, you actually don't have a lot of life experience. And that's what I'm saying again. What I'm saying here is just things that have been helpful to me as an individual. You know, I'm not telling you how to live your life, right? I'm not, I'm not saying do this, uh, except for some obvious things like, you know, quit porn. But um, yeah, um, so I think those are, th th that's an important thing is just to realize that you, there's a lot of knowledge out there. You're going to, you're going to learn over time and you're not going to have it all right now. And so just kind of take your time with things mull over things even if you don't agree with them um yeah don't don't cause some kind of huge strife or conflict over a, over a disagreement mm -hmm. you know yeah that's that's definitely a huge thing i think this is the example of why like these like you get a circle it's full of negative people eventually you get a point of disagreement what do these people do well they don't they're not used to be constrained they don't ha the, that friendship does not have that culture so if you have a problem with someone, what you usually do is you backbite them, right? And like, I kind of want to give you like a litmus test, right? Because I know that there are some people that are like watching the stream with like bad intentions. There's probably some people watching the stream to like find something bad that I say to like use it against me. It's, you know, it's like a reality of like everyone goes through this. If they're making content on YouTube, I'm not special in this regard. But like, if you're one of those people, you do that, like you watch someone to like catch them at a bad moment so you can use them against it, which you like on friends group, etc. I'll like, you need to fix your life. Like you are a massive loser. Like look at, evaluate yourself. What are you doing? You are spending your valuable time. Instead of doing something good, what are you doing? You're spending your valuable time trying to bring someone else down who you haven't really even met, right? And I don't consider online meeting a real meeting. Maybe if you, maybe you did meet that person, but even then it's like, you know, what are we told? You know, we're supposed to pray for enemies. We're supposed to forgive them. Even if they don't forgive or pray for us, we're supposed to pray for enemies and forgive them. And there's, you know, this idea of like, oh, you know, those are high standards. I shouldn't expect, you know, like, okay, like, no one's going to condemn you for not following them, but it's still like you're still going to accept that these are things that you have to follow, right? Um, I, a lot of people online have this like crazy idea of like, you know, the e-celeb stuff, right? And like, I, like people need to cut that out a little bit as well. Like, you know, e-celebs are like, 
you know, like, don't be like an e-celeb fan, right? Like, that's basically what I'm trying to get at is that, like, my, what I give to you is just, like, my view on the world, right? Like, you can meet me. It's like, the, let me give you the example of Robert Pattinson's uh, story. Like, you know that, you know that story from Robert Pattinson where, like, someone's stalking him and uh, a girl stalking him and like he ends up saying oh well i'm bored anyway so i'm gonna take this girl on a date and he just complains about his life the whole time and then the girl never shows up again right like the, the point is a lot of these people they're like popular that you really like or follow respect a lot of them really are just like that that's just social media social media exalt people it makes everyone look really good because they only post what's the best part of their lives but like you don't see the real them and when you see the real them it's still social media right and especially in orthodoxy sometimes people think that the bad points of someone's life is actually the good point of someone's life because we you know we agree that humility is a good virtue etc but suddenly humility gets in inverted and it becomes the opposite so it's still like the best moment of your life is like your worst moment of life and it just it just becomes insane like right and you know, if you haven't, if you don't have anything else to add, I think we can get into like the dating side of things. I hate talking about this kind of stuff, but uh, because some people are kind of like mentioning that in a live chat, uh, you know. Um, how to... I I don't really feel like I'm in a position to give a lot of. I mean, I'm in a relationship, but I don't feel like I have a lot of. I'm in a position to give a. Oh, a I'm not. I'm not saying there. let's give dating advice. I'm saying like let's do yeah. the opposite. Like, how to, like, why you shouldn't think of dating, for example. That's basically, like, how I see usually. It's like a lot well, of There's people... two approaches, right? There's, like, yeah. the... There's, like, the approach where you kind of wait until you're older and you've established yourself and you've got a lot more control over things and a lot more to kind of offer in a relationship, right? And then the idea is that you will just basically find someone uh, and then the other view is that it's a worthy endeavor to try and find someone in order to get married young and then grow together from that point um i lean more towards the latter i don't think there's anything wrong with either way um but maybe there's other ways too i i guess that's just i don't really have an awful lot yeah. to say yeah yeah that's a good thing because like what people usually expect, like one of the things they do online um, is like they're socially autistic, but they don't look at the fact that they don't have friends. They're like, why don't I have a girlfriend? I need a girlfriend. And so they like look into these POAs and spiritual online daddies and things like that to like try to get themselves a girl and stuff like that. My, I want to offer a very different perspective. Um, I think that if you think, if you have like, priorities like list like 10 priorities in your mind and like one of them is dating take that off and replace it with something else that's basically like my perspective because um i'm going to give you an analogy of like again the rpg analogy let's say you're playing an rpg game your party is like all level 10 and like there's a boss battle think of the think of dating a girl as that boss battle it's really not that big of a deal but for the sake of example it's it's a level 50 right you need to normally you're supposed to grind, so you're supposed to work, you know, find a job, make money, fix your appearance, socialize, you know, you're supposed to grind and level up. And when you get to that stage, you know, you're going to be over leveling the boss and you're going to be destroying it really easily. It's going to be really easy to you. So what am I saying here? Uh, if you, you know, fix the basic problems in your life in terms of socialization, in terms of your status, in terms of your money, in terms of your looks. I'm not saying that these are not genetic. In fact, all of these things, I argue, are primarily genetic. But there's still things that you can do something about it. And, and I want to I wanna touch that later on. But uh, you, you work on these things, and then that boss is going to be really easy. It's just like how you usually contact your friends. You, you, you meet up with a girl... You know, maybe she's in your friend's group and you basically pull her in a one-on-one -on -one car and say, say, hey, you know, let's meet, you know, let's meet with each other together. And like, if she has a brain, she'll know exactly what you're doing. She's like, oh, she, this guy want to take me out. And if she says yes, then you know exactly what's going on, right? So like, that's how you, it usually works. Um, 
usually, right? And then like just being straightforward is like the simplest way so that you don't get these like weird situations. Uh, but what people usually do, here's what people usually do, is that they go on dating apps, they try to DM e-girls on Discord and social media on Twitter, and they just try to do it over and over and over and over again. It's like trying to fight the boss when you're level 10 over and over and over again. Yeah, you're getting you're, you're, you're finding new weaknesses of the boss, but it's still not working because you haven't built up the things that you need to have in order to do that. That's why I think talking about dating, trying to find a girlfriend, it's a, it's a like if you need to talk about it, then you already failed is my honest opinion. If you have to talk about it, if you have to learn something about it, it's already over. Like you've already failed because you don't need to, you don't need to do I, any I think, of that. I think one of the good advices is to um, consult with people who are in stable marriages like whether it's from your parish or otherwise, you know, if you want to have an insight into relationship, I think that's probably one of the best places to go. Um, because I think having a relationship is one thing, but then being married seems to be something that's completely different from what I've observed. Um, it introduces just an immense number of challenges that weren't there previously um so yeah i think um if you are going through this process of discerning between you know like being unmarried and being married i think that's the that's one of the best things to do i think having interactions with married people has helped me have an insight into how i would how, how i think i'd want to you know end up whether i'd like yeah. that yeah definitely i mean a lot of people don't like the boomer advice, but like the spirit of boomer advice, I 100% agree with it. It's just like the application, they just, because they don't live in the same world, they just don't like know what's, what are the challenges, right? Um, so you might not get good advice, but you might still get something good out of it. Um, in terms of, yeah, like know from like stable marriages and people that have stable marriages and you mentioned family. I, I can't believe how we didn't mention this. Fix your problems with your family. If you can't, if if it feels awkward to talk with your father or your mother, just talk to them, right? Uh, I have, I know a guy, not a friend, but I know a guy, and um, I and I know a, and, and I know a girl, and uh, the I'll, I'll give the example of the guy. Uh, I saw him trying to talk like difficult, like these like no-no conversations that are divisive, that are important, right? Like things I talk about in my channel, he's trying to talk to his mother and like give like a, you know, long speech about etc. I do not think that's a good way to like mend relationships with your parents. That's not going to mend a relationship. So uh, from my example, from my mother, my family obviously know that I'm an Orthodox Christian. Um, they themselves, you know, I told them that I converted and they themselves are like, we don't understand why, but you know, you're our son, we're going to support you. Um, so of course, you know, thank them for that. I thank them for that. But like, you know, I don't talk about extends long things with my mother or father. For example, my dad, he's not receptive to the conversations because he has this like boomer mindset about these things. My mom, on the other hand, is more receptive, but she has like a vague respect, just respect everyone's beliefs kind of a view. So obviously, if I try to try to like convince them of the truth of Christianity in like the way I normally do, which I'm usually good at, it's going to totally fail. I know that myself. I, I don't even need to try it. Right. Uh, but if I try to, for example, focus on living a Christian life, now that is going to have an effect on them, for example. Some people think in that manner, right? They are they care more about how you conduct yourself than what you say. And that's another thing that I want to get into is you need to learn how to conduct yourself and how you can manifest who you are as a person. Not manifest in like the liberal meme understanding, but like manifest who you are as a person and conduct yourself in the best way that the other person can receive and understand it. Um, if you cannot conduct yourself well, you need to fix that. And again, 
I can't stress enough how much I see people just only the only thing they can talk about is like the very serious things. You gotta you gotta chillax, relax a little bit, like just ease it up and like understand that there are things that are just lights that you can love in this world. Like just walking outside and saying, Oh butterfly. That can be a deep thing to say for that moment. Oh, a butterfly, you know, might have an effect on someone. But like you talk about something really deep to your parents, like, oh, in, so dad, in the fifth century, there was this guy called St. John Chrysostom. Like, you know, like, it's like, no, you don't do that way, right? Or, in the, or this or that, or, the, or according to Bible, it says this only like when you're prompted to. That's usually like what I learned from my priest. Is gen the general rule is that do not talk about the faith unless you are prompted to. And Elder Cleopa, in fact, follows this rule. Uh, he preaches this rule in one of his books. He um, it was written about him. He was in a train ride with a bunch of communists, and he gave a massive apologetics lesson. Basically, told them how Christianity is true. But he only did that when he was prompted to because they were like mockingly asking him questions about the faith, and he was like, "Well, you're asking me questions. I have to answer." Like you're leaving me with, with no choice. That's what you want to do. You want to just you want to have a good justification on what you, whatever you're doing to other people, so that they can't use these things against you. And they're like, oh, you know, he had to say it, and so I had to listen. And there's something behind it, you know. That that's that's an example. Um, can you check your DMs by the way on Discord? Okay. Um. Also, I'd say um, another thing that would be important, this is kind of a unrelated, but, um, and you learn this quite early on in, in your career, if you have a career, is to be assertive in the sense that, not to just like lord over people, but to be able to say no, for example, to things like realizing your own um, self-worth and feeling, you know, empowered to be able to <clears throat> say no if something, if someone's being overbearing or to um, kind of try and make things happen, I guess. Mm -hmm. And there's actually like, um, like a lot of career workplaces have like basically kind of like modules that you go through to learn these things, you know, um, to have to have this kind of assertiveness um, and that's something that takes a lot of time to to develop as well it's not it's not necessarily so easy for everyone mm -hmm. yeah and uh um, i was gonna also add well i kind of forgot what i was gonna add but uh, this kind of gets into i i also i really want to comment more on the kind of like dating stuff and like the source and the problems of it but uh, I think that will be fit for a different stream because uh, what, I, what, I, what I've learned at least today is kind of just like getting into, you know, these are the solutions that we can do. At the same time, for example, the way I can easily communicate is like when someone asks me a question, then I can like specifically think about that thing and like things come up in my mind. Whereas like generally speaking, it's a lot, it's a lot more difficult. But um, Louis, you want to wrap things up or do you have anything else to add? Um, just one last thing about humidity that I realized that I don't do enough is kind of remembering the last judgment, you know, like at some point in the future, there's going to be like, you know, the revelation horn is going to sound and then you're not going to be able to repent anymore. Like, that's it, you know, yeah. done. You, you, it's just not repentance is just going to like cease to be a live option mm -hmm. and god knows i've made lots of mistakes in my life and i have a lot of regrets um and so i think a lot of the time we should remember we, we should remember that and especially when you're um doing things that are related to family or otherwise try try not to um do or say things that you're going to regret at the end of your life you know like and this applies to smaller things as well like don't don't not do things as well that and it goes to the going out of your comfort zone but you know more it's like you know you get these kind of horrible stories of like well 
it's the, you see in, <clears throat> in in movies and stuff and it's like oh well my like my my mother died and the last thing i said to her was this unpleasant thing you know mm-hmm. like don't don't do that try and try and remember not to do or say anything that you might regret in the event that something terrible happens um, and the last judgment is something that is quite uh, terrible in, in in a sense as well so um yeah i've been trying to be a lot more careful yeah definitely definitely especially with people who we like our family right i think uh, the deracination part of it is because of us right like because we're so used to seeing our families is that we kind of forget that they are our family and so usually people end up being like oh i didn't realize how i loved my mother until she passed away right uh that's the common thing but it's even more important to not forget that especially today when we need family more than ever even if they're incompetent even if they didn't raise you well you can't change your father dude you can't take another one right you can't be born out of another mother it just doesn't work that way and most of the time in first world countries your family isn't even that like like negative towards you they're happy to support they just have like these like boomer ideas and they like want you to live the life they want you to live but if you conduct yourself properly, and the reason why they think that way is because your family probably thinks that you are incompetent yourself and you can't like live your own life and so you need to kind of prove that and one of the things you can prove that is actually fix whatever problems you have with your family fix them and a lot of things will build up from that i think uh you know you got to start with your own family family comes first you know that dominic toretto or whatever guy that the bald guy that fast and furious everyone's memeing about family comes first i mean just be like that guy family does come first and you can't you can't change it uh i think that pretty much covers I mean, a lot of different things yeah just before you wrap up mm-hmm. um someone mentioned world war three being depressing and stuff and it's like this goes back to the optimistic mindset where it's like you know maybe we can't be optimistic about some things but we should try and not worry ourselves about things that we don't have any control over whatsoever. Mm-hmm. You know, yeah. like there's no point in worrying and stressing yourself out about something that you have exactly zero influence over the outcome. Mm-hmm. The best you can do is get dealt the cards you get dealt and try and play with them. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah yeah this um, idea that life has to be this specific way is a sickness it life doesn't work that way oh it has to be that way you know people have to respect me this cannot happen to me or or things like that no like that's just like okay so <laughs> there's a saying my dad has but i don't want to translate because it's very very vulgar but the point is like you so you want you want everything to go your way no that's not that's not you know it's not going to be fun, right? You're not going to learn anything. You're not going to grow. So uh, with the point of World War Three and the, the depressing things that's going to... You don't know when it's going to happen. That's the thing is that like the more you like think about it, you're just going to think about something which date you don't even know about and it's going to eat you up. And the real base is not even going to be that catastrophic event. It's going to be what you didn't do until that event happened. You know, like, uh, that's also a good way to think about it. That's actually much worse because you do have control over that and you didn't do anything about it. What's wrong with you, right? Uh, anything else to add or should we just wrap up? Uh, I think we should wrap up uh, there. Just again, yeah, this is, none of this is like, oh, this is advice to you or formal kind of like, mm-hmm. it's just we're me not sharing. your spiritual daddies we're not your spiritual fathers we're not your and, parents and I'm, I'm, I'm generally i never do this i've never done this kind of thing before you know mm-hmm. um and i probably won't do it again yeah um it's just it really is just like uh these are some things that have helped me if they if if sharing these things to an audience helps someone out there uh then i'll be happy and and that would, would have been the purpose yeah Definitely. And you got to figure some of this stuff out on your own, you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's it comes from practice. It comes from trying it. And eventually, it will become integrated into your brain. You'll get used to it. And you'll be like, 
what the heck was wrong with me like two, two years ago you'll be like you'll be normal right and like my slogan about this kind of stuff is like don't be a normie be normal i think there's a massive difference between the two you want to make being a normie abnormal by making yourself the new normal and part of it is understanding how human beings have always communicated with each other throughout history uh they don't communicate like a lot of people communicate today. That's just how, not how they talk these days. And, uh, you know, select your friend circle. Don't hang out with low quality people that just, you know, tries to try to bring you down. Bring ha Be around with people that bring you up, you know, whether it's by status or anything else. And uh, it sounds like planning and things like that. But like, you know, it's like, for example, me personally. One thing I want to know before I finally leave is like, isn't it crazy that a Turk ended up being the second in command in an Orthodox Christian server? How did that happen? It's because we know how to deal with people and how to like get ourselves into these. Like it's just it's just in our in our culture for us, like communicating with people and you know getting into positions of power like that. I mean, it's, it's not even a big deal. It's like a Discord man. Like it's I'm a Discord Jani right second in command but it's still like it's still kind of like you know i still have some control over the biggest orthodox christian community and i i can decide to do something and it can influence the whole community right uh that's a significant thing and as a turk you know who like there are barely any turks that are orthodox christian how did that even happen why was it not just an american guy who did it because it's again it's like something just talking with people, communicating with people, socializing, knowing what to say and what to not to say, understanding these things for us. It's these are normal things. So, you know, I didn't lick anyone's boots to like get to where I am at to for my channel. 90% of my videos, 95% of my videos are just solo, just me. It's just me talking to you. 5% of them, uh, 3% of them is Lewis and 2% of them is other people. <laughs> but uh the point that i'm getting at is that uh there are valuable lessons you can learn from different cultures on this this sounds crazy but there's valuable lessons you can learn from different cultures and see how they do things and this is what's insane about orthodox is that you have like russians romanians serbians etc learn from them because it's not a coincidence that the cradles are very social people and that they make you feel very welcome right it's not a coincidence that that's the thing that it's it's not a coincidence that the converts are the unusual people it's not a coincidence right these people know how to communicate and so you can learn a little bit of things from them from this from these people and you know incorporate it into your life that's the final thing yeah. i'll leave you off with and i want to thank you all for listening to us ramble hopefully we could help you remember these are guidelines this is not going to fix your life instantly it's a long road you're 20 years old you're 20 something your life is not over, okay? If you're 20 years old or like thereabouts, your life is not over. Stop acting like it is. Thank you for watching. I'll see you all.